discussing sexual addiction can be overcome. The question, for those of you who didn't hear, the question is, if somebody is addicted to masturbation and pornography, how can it be overcome? Every sexual addiction can be overcome. Certainly can be overcome. The first thing I want to see in that direction is get accountability or become accountable. Let somebody know what you are going through, what you are struggling with, what you are dealing with, what you are trying to overcome. I was speaking with with someone, a lady who had this issue of, um, you know, addicted to pornography. <laughs> Interesting. You have come to light. Sin thrives in secrecy. We have heard this quote severally from many people. I don't know who said it originally, but it's a very popular saying, and it's a true saying. Sin thrives in secrecy. And as long as it's in darkness, don't tell anybody it's just your little secrets. It can power on that addiction. If the addiction is in darkness, it is powered. Sin and darkness work together. Come into light. Be accountable. Tell your pastor. If you feel your pastor will not be able to help you, look for someone that can help you. You can just talk to a Christian, a solid Christian who is skilled in these matters because it takes a great deal of skill to deal with this. All right? And this lady told me, as soon as I, because, okay, I told her, okay, you have told me now. I said, okay, I began to ask a few questions, just, and I discovered she was just inquisitive, just inquisitive that was making her watch pornography. It wasn't like, <laughs> it wasn't like she's even, um, Craving it, person. She's just inquisitive. But, but anyway, I told her what to do, and I just prayed with her, gave her advice, assured her that she can deal with this matter and that she's going to overcome it. Three months later, I asked her, How far would that stop? We, we spoke about it. She said, Since I've told you, I've, I've never gone back to it. This is something she was doing every day. I've never gone back to it. Since I mentioned to you, just the fact that I spoke to you seemed to release me out of it. Seem to bring me out of that bondage. So get accountable. Tell somebody, listen, I know that uh, many, many churches are legalistic and many Christians are legalistic. So I say you need skill to deal with this. And many people are not equipped with a gracious heart to deal with these issues. But there are people you can talk to who will not crucify you and who will help you. Who would help you conquer? There are people that their words will bring healing and repair. They will rebuke you if they need to, if that's going to be a solution, because ultimately the solutions we are looking for, solutions, all right? If they need to rebuke you, if they do a diagnosis that they say that you need to be rebuked, oh, they will rebuke you. But eventually you will get well. So get accountable. Talk to somebody about it. Open up about your issues. Pornography, masturbation, they are not um, new sins and they can be conquered and they are not almighty they can be conquered secondly um um you see the 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 whole issue of craving to watch pornography or masturbating which is basically to the end of sexual excitement and sexual pleasure is because many people are sexually charged they are sexually they are, there's a lot of sexual content or sexually suggestive content and that's the word sexually suggestive content around them do you know that if you have have ungodly ladies on your whatsapp status and you spend five minutes viewing some of their status updates just five minutes just because their cleavages are out and they are all lewd and posing like like pornography actresses you know this one is carrying his tongue out like somebody who is about to do something sexual so sexually suggestive poses sexually suggestive photographs that alone can get you sexually charged and when this happens many times people succumb to just watching pure pornographic content or easing themselves as it were and masturbation now let me talk about masturbation a little bit because there's, there's this stupid lie that has been around and uh, talking about things like uh, um you, you know, if, if you don't masturbate, uh, there will be health, health consequences. Um, as a man, if you do not pass out semen in masturbation, um, they will accumulate and then they will 
it would endanger your health. That's wrong. That's very wrong. And a Google search, a simple medical inquiry will confirm that that's wrong. So don't let anything deceive you. And and um, because a lot of people are actually falling to such stupid ideologies. It's just child, it's child talk to say that. So, uh, uh, but a major is a major stronghold of masturbation is that many would not even really see it as a sexual sin. And let me try this one point here. Pornography and masturbation. Many people don't really see it as a sexual sin. You see, you, you, I, I posted something the other day about young ladies asking for romantic guys. And it's caused a, a controversy. Because some people say, uh, okay, actually somebody shared the post and somebody was referencing the post and said, okay, no, I said, what I wrote on the post was that I hope what you mean by romantic guy is not a guy who believes in non-penetrative sex, who believes and practices non-penetrative sex. So now, sexuality has seemingly been divided. There's penetrative sex, there's non-penetrative sex. We have things like oral sex. I don't like classifying sex. I will tell people that sex is sex. And why do I define sex? I'll tell you simply, whatever gives sexual pleasure and any sexual activity, even if it does not give sexual pleasure, is sex. And if it is outside marriage, it's a sexual sin. You can redefine it, you can call it non-penetrative sex, you can call it oral sex, all of those things are code words. They are just to make it look like it's not real sex. And so people think that if the penis is not entering the vagina, sex has not happened. But what we read in scriptures in Matthew 5 talks about lusting after a woman in your heart. That's the standard. Please, let's not mix things up. Bro. Let's not mix things up. You lost after a woman in your heart. You have already committed adultery in Jesus' books, as it were. So, somebody says masturbation is not really sex because um, it's just me. It's a stronghold. If it gives if it's a sexual activity, it is sex. If it's a sexual activity, it is sex. It gives sexual pleasure, it is sex. Another person does not have to be involved. Now, so things like now, let me just give a common sense approach to most people that masturbate masturbate in private lonely times. Private lonely times. People say uh, I was just bored, you know. But then in boredom, some of them decide to watch a movie. Watching a movie alone, the rain is now falling and the weather is cold, or there's a matan. And then sex, sex in masturbation or sexuality masturbation happens. You have to trace your vulnerable moment. Once you know that I'm about to get into a mood, into a realm where I'm vulnerable, call somebody. There are people I've told like that. I said, listen, once you feel vulnerable, call me or just send me a message. And go back to your life. Take actions when you call for help after the deed has been done and it's too late. Once you know I am sensing I am I'm invulnerable right now, I'm invulnerable right now. The things I'm craving, the things I want to be doing are dangerous things, are illegal things, are sinful things. Get help, call for help. If there's somebody you can trust that you can express, somebody you're accountable to, this is how I feel. Though. I thought I should let you know. If the person is skillful enough, the person will know what to tell you to you distract you. Of course, because there is an issue of people being idle. You know, it's illness brings a lot of sexual sins and sexual promotion, particularly what I call no sexual sins like pornography or solo rather. Solo, yeah, solo sexual sins like pornography and, and masturbation. All right. So talk to somebody who you can trust with, with that issue in your vulnerable moment and then avoid whatever charges that up. Many Christians still don't know how to music library with sexual energizing songs. Listen to me. I don't know how Christians let me let me, let me be very straight up straight up here. See that one as it is a popular song. You say what is bad in listening to must it be you now say you will not come in. Come on, give me a break now. Give me a break. 
Everything is sexually charged, sexually inclined, sexually suggesting. Many of all this music, and it's because they want to sell. Many of all this good, it's money. Money is their issue. They're looking for money. They know what sex sells to sexuality. So they just get some girls, come and dance half naked, shake their breasts, shake, shake their buttocks. They know that's what sells. That's what will get played on, 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 on big, 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 big music concerts and big music shows. And then you see people feeding on all of these things. When somebody watches half naked girls, it is just natural that you may want to watch full naked girls. It's just natural. When somebody listens to music and lyrics that are sexually suggestive, it is natural that they will want to watch. If you hear sexuality, you want to watch sexuality. So remove whatever charges you up sexually. Like I said, you, there are some statuses I don't open because I know the person. I, I know the person. The person's status is not born against. I don't open it. I don't open it. Yeah, so you have to you have to be deliberate about all of this. I think that can you can deal with pornography and masturbation to an extent. I can't hear you now, Jeff. Your network is is now quite low. Try to speak a bit louder, please. Okay, yeah, I can hear you now. Can you hear me now, sir? Yes. Yes, go ahead, please. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, please. Standard has not changed. Let me portray that also. God's standard has not changed in every generation. In every generation, the standards of God remain the same. For most Christians, the problem is that the values have dropped, the values have dropped. And for, for most Christians, um, you know, many Christians are involved in <laughs> a lot of sexual activities that are not penetrative. As long as it's not non penetrative sex, they feel that that's fine. And because there's a great drop of from exchanging naked pictures, um, a lot of all these inventions that people invent anyway, inventions for sexual, um, sexual um, um, cravings and all that. The standards are the same with God, although the generation has evolved, but the standards are the same. Please note that. Let's get back to the standards of God. Let's get back to the standards of God. Christians involved in every other thing aside from non-penetrative sex or aside from penetrative sex other is just ridiculous. Purity begins with the mind, extends to the hands, the eyes, the ears. Let's be deliberate about sexual purity. Let's watch what Job said, I've made a covenant with my eyes, I will not look upon the maid. Jesus says, if your eyes cause you to sin, remove it, pluck it out. Sexual purity does not just start with sexual organs. Let me say that again. Sexual purity does not start with sexual organs. It starts with every part of you. Your eyes, your ears, your mouth, your heart, your hands, your feet, where you go with your legs. Christians go to clubs to go and do what? Evangelism? What, what are you going to do in the club? Christians go to parties where every lady there is, is dressed in, in seductive ways and they are drinking and they are getting high on weed. And somebody goes there as a Christian and sits down there and says, I'm not going to smoke. Um, I'm going to be listening to the Moen on AP. So what, what, what are you doing there? Sexual purity involves every part of you, every part of you. And um, if, if we can get this, this you know, installed as a mindset, we can now deal with controlling our sexual passions. Let me also speak about two things, two more things here. Let's talk about self-control here. Let's talk about self-control. Please note that you can control yourself. You can control yourself. But there are exercises that can develop your self-control. A simple exercise as fasting can develop your self-control and help you curb your sexual drives. Um, usually, most things are traced to stomach, to the stomach. They say that the way, the way to a man's heart is in the stomach. That is true in a sense. But basically, a man that can control his stomach can most likely control his sexual organs. A man that can control his stomach can most likely control his sexual organs. You can exercise yourself in self-control. All right? Um, that will work. Um, 
Let's also talk about the fact that, well, make plans to get married. If you're not married, make plans to get married. Make plans to get married. First Corinthians 7, Apostle Paul's recommendation, one of which was that if you find it difficult to control yourself, get married. I know it's more difficult in this generation where you have to have a millionaire in your account. If you're going to the smallest of weddings, <laughs> you have to, you know, it's quite a bit. And actually, this is what makes sexual temptations much. In previous generations, we get married in their teenage, you see 19 year old ladies getting married. It didn't have to be very comfortable to get married. Some people just got married. Most of our Christian fathers got married in their early 20s. Now, the average Christian gets married in their, in their mid 30s because everybody wants to be wealthy or comfortable financially. So this is all written accumulating to sexual issues. So if you can get married as much as possible, as quick as possible, do that. Get married. That will help. Um, and then if for people that are married, enjoy sex in marriage, please. Enjoy sex in marriage. There's no reason why people that are married should still be struggling with sexual temptation. Yeah, somebody says marriage does not cure sexual temptation. That's, in a sense, true. Um, in a sense, but in scriptures, according to 1 Corinthians 7, Paul clearly states that uh, marriage is one of the ways in which sexual sins can be curbed. That's clear in scriptures. That's clear in scriptures. So, have as much sex as you can as a married person, if you are married, and once you are, you know, getting sexually attracted to somebody else who is not your wife, report yourself, one, to God, two, to your wife, or to your husband. Let me say that again. For people that are married, if you are beginning to get sexually driven towards somebody, report the case to God and report the case to your spouse. If your spouse tells you cut off relationships or cut off that relationship, even if the person is your pastor, listen, obey, do as you're told. I don't want to be too extreme to say anybody they are sexually attracted to cut off. I don't want to say that. But by the time you examine the case and you see it is a bit obsessive, you see that this thing is getting is getting is getting to a particular level. It could be your colleague at work. Ah, you have to take actions. You have to take actions. That's why Jesus says cut it out, cut it off. Whatever it makes you sexually vulnerable, you have to eliminate it. Um, all of this said, let's be deliberate about protecting our hearts. Let's learn to switch off the TV when perversion is being shown. Let's learn to stop liking pages that are sexually suggestive on Facebook. Let's learn to stop following Instagram models on the media who dress with bra and pants and call it bikini. You know the thing they call bikini is just bra and pants? And then people just give it two names and then they say it's, it's just a bikini. And all of these things create so much sexual energies in our space. We can be more deliberate to avoid and close our eyes and our hearts to whatever it is that will lead into sexual sins. That's what I would say. Thank you.